uh, burning. You had this on? It's not on. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's on. Can you? It's on. Right? You can hear me. So I'm saying thank you, Madasi Adupwe. It's always wonderful to be with African people, with our family. We're going to um, start with libation. And it really is um, appropriate for elders to do the libation. But we are in the ma'afa. And we are re-birthing, <laughs> we are reconstructing. And so we have um, my daughter, Jifa, and a young man, uh, Obadeli, who is the son of Mama Mawia. Um, and Obadeli has been studying what he's showing us the way. The youth are showing us the way. He's been studying the tree language and will lead us in uh, libation. Um, you have some space where people can see you? makes a very uh, proud. This young man is studying tree language and doing it in a very serious way, the uh, Khan people in Ghana. Well, I want to thank um, the family of ASCAC for having us all be here and for allowing me to share with you today. Um, in the interest of time, because everything is uh, quite late, I'm going to try to go faster and um, not, do, not be as thorough as I would have been. So what, what I want to do is to begin always at the beginning, begin with the African worldview. Begin to create a context for us understanding what it means to be an African woman now here in Babylon, in the Ma'afa, to understand where we come from. And so let me begin with that. And a lot of the, the overheads will really be about that, uh, primarily. Giving some information, and, and I know it'll be, a lot of it will be new for people. 
Uh, but it's just a point the way to things that we need to study and we need to um, uh, go into depth. And so that's assignments for all of us to do the research that needs to be done. Let's begin with the paradigm of healthy development for African people, the natural cycle of, of African uh, cultural development, development of African civilization. Um, Ma'at, we're going to begin in Ma'at, feel ourselves to be people who begin in Ma'at, and then using the rhythm of Ma'at, we develop African civilization. Ma'at being representing African wholeness, African health, the source of African being, truth, ma'at, reciprocity, ma'at. And this is how we begin, and then we develop our civilization. We do the work of that development, which is what our ancestors did. And in so doing, we need to periodically remind ourselves of who we are. This is what our ancestors would do when we were in a situation of health. And so that periodic uh, cleansing and reminding and recentering is Sankofa. Sankofa, a term that we get from the Akan people, the Adinkra symbolic system, Sankofa, return go back, turn and go back, turn and go back and get, go back and fetch it, return to the source. All of this is in the meaning of Sankofa. And then we would continue our work, if you can see the, the cycle becomes a spiral, it is a process, and we would move back again to Ma'at, which would inspire us again. You know, we drink from the well again to know what was the truth of our work as African people. And then we would move out again, and we would work again, and we would need to be renewed again, and we would cleanse ourselves, and that would be Sankofa. And what I'm suggesting is that the natural cycle of African cultural development is the alternation, the repetition of ma'at, sankofa, ma'at, sankofa, ma'at, sankofa, and so forth. And you see the umbilical cord, which is connecting us always to ma'at the mother, ma'at the mother, that divine female principle which inspires us sets us off on our way and connects us to the energy force of our beginnings, our wholeness, and our health. So it's in that context that we want to go quickly and look at some of the things that it has meant to be a woman in African health. The next one is just briefly to remind ourselves of Shek Anta Jop's work that has come to be called the Two Cradle Theory, which pointed to the differences, the, the kind of um, antithetical relationship or oppositional relationship between the African worldview and the European worldview. We don't have time to go in that in depth, but it helps us to orient ourselves. It helps us to give a context. And so he talked about these aspects of cultures, the, the environment, and then we look at the means of survival, we look at the lifestyle and so forth. And on one side, you see the, the um, Aryan development, which of course came later. It came after the Southern Cradle development. But then let's look at the Southern Cradle development where you see a mother-focused, matrifocal, um, what he called matriarchal um, worldview and civilization. Matriarchal uh, term being used here with some caution because it does not refer to the domination um, uh, by women or, or um, dominance of women. 
Uh, he said that it referred to a society which was in balance and uh, beneficial to the family, to both men and women. So you have to say this. In the complementary system, you have the OB, who is the male leader of the entire society. And then you have the Omu. Omu is, is like a term that means mother. The Omu is the head of the marketplace. She is the person in authority for um, women, for um, spiritual issues. The marketplace is like the most important place where people come together, where important decisions are made, where um, goods are uh, gathered, distributed, where women are able to be involved in, in uh, and, and express their entrepreneurial skills. The marketplace is an extremely important, like the heart of the society, and the Omu is the leader of the market. This system is, is so intricate and complex, and we don't have time to go into it now, but I want to give you an idea of the Omu and her place in the society and what the market means. The term here is ahia, for market. It is the gathering of the people. The Omu calls together the various Ikporo Ani. If you can remember, that was the council from the villages to come together when there are important decisions to be made. So we have here, among the Igbo, a decentralized, highly organized system of decision making. The Omu being a central figure as the mother and the various other um, representatives informing decisions that are made for the whole and then them being taken back to the uh, entire society for their um, uh, approval. Now, this is something that's interesting that I think we need to look at. And that is that we say, we use the term queen mother. But what I'm finding in terms of African society is that to say mother is to say queen. So that it's really in the language is being redundant to say queen mother. It is assumed, it is in, it's incorporated in the concept of motherhood because motherhood is it's a term that means so many things, but it is also, it's a political term. It's a cultural term. It means, uh, it's like a set. It is the one who is responsible for the society in a particular way. The one who nurtures the society, the one who stabilizes the society, all of those things. So Omu would be queen mother. And of course, we know a lot of other terms. We know Asantehema. We know you know, in every Ialode, we, all of these terms we have in every African society, which is this mother concept. And this is part of what it means to be an African woman. This is the legacy that we must use to inspire our development and that brothers and sisters alike must reclaim and learn to use in terms of the strengthening and rebuilding of African civilization. So that's the Igbo. And I'm gonna move real fast through, just so that we can see how it works around the continent. Try to go fast. This, these are, I'm just giving, what I did was to go throughout different societies and take terms that represented the icons in history. Um, right? Yeah, that's the one I have. Okay. Um, Mujaji, um, one, two, and three from Manamatapa. 
um, because we have not, we've been looking at just some societies in Africa, but we need to look at um, Zimbabwe, we need to look at Southern Africa and see the patterns, the common patterns that we see there. Um, Amida and Zenga, of course, uh, we know and we are calling forth that spirit every time we name ourselves, when we use these names. We got to understand what that represents. These represent the, the, the heroes, the, the leaders, the warrior heroes of Africa. Ya Asantewa, Hatshepsut, the various candaces, because there's a series of, of candaces. This is just people who know African history, they will know, and Professor Clark could tell you, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is very little. So you see, brothers and sisters out there who are doing your research, who are, who are studying, who are preparing yourselves to be the, the leaders that we need, the organizers, really, that we need, this is what you've got to do. You've got to study this in depth. And this is what Dr. Clark was asking us to do, by the way. Um, then let's go to the next one and very quickly, what I call the mothers of the nation. We've already talked about that, the leaders of the women. So among the women, they would also have their leaders. You have the Omu, you have the Iyalode, which is the Yoruba term, the Asantahema, which people know about. And you know there's the complementarity with the Asantaheni. Um, Ma'af, Mafo, coming from Bamaleki people, um, Nemoye from the Nupe people. The Sowe is from the Sande society among the Mende people and other people close to the Mende, Sierra Leone. Um, the, the Sande society is a powerful women's society which is growing. It is growing. It is not, the, we're not talking about relics, you know, that can be put, as, as Dr. Clark says, in the trash can of history. We're talking about viable forms of organization which we need to use as models now and give new life to. And among, uh, and within the Sunday Society, which is an organization for all women, which teaches young women how to be women and teaches women how to take positions of political leadership, this organization is growing. The numbers have been growing. It is getting larger. It is not diminishing. Uh, the Soe would be the mothers or the teachers, the big sisters within Sunday society. Um, and then there are many others. So let's move on to the next one. I've already mentioned uh, Sunday, something everybody needs to know about. You need to read a book called Radiance from the Waters by Sil Sylvia Boone, um, Yale uh, Press. Um, and then here are some other terms on the left which represent women's organization in various uh, societies, and we could talk about that at, at another time. Specifically, on the right, we have rituals of female power and sacred space. Now, this is extremely important. Gelede, for instance, and I think I have a picture. Yeah, let's just move on to that since we don't have a lot of time. Um, this is a mask of, of Gelede. Gelede is among the Yoruba. We need to study it very closely because what uh, this represents is, is a huge festival. It represents ritual. It represents ceremony. It represents a process where, where Yoruba people come together to honor what they consider to be mother power, mother energy. But they are also, uh, in addition to honoring it, they are calling on it for the entire society. You see, if we don't have that divine mother force um, supporting what we do, then we're weakened. And it is that force that has enabled us to, to this, this miracle of survival um, as African people that we have called upon at every juncture in our history that we, because of how we've been taught to think in terms of male, female, and so forth, are ignoring, not studying, not understanding, and is also getting, uh, uh, how should I put it, um, maybe perverted, distorted, as it is expressed by European feminists, you see, who want to uh, claim African concepts, African uh, uh, culture, and, and say that they're theirs. You know, you get these Swedish women who are writing these books and so forth, and then put that in a context 
of being uh, women against men, being uh, women fighting men, men fighting women. That's the context that they come out of. Hey, that's for them. You know, they're continuing their legacy. That's how they came out of the caves, was in terms of the, the, the a battle between difference, you understand? Whereas the difference for us, as, as Mama Iva points out, is oppositional unity, is that everything in nature works that way, that you need those two principles to work together in order for there to be creation and recreation and the con continuity and continuation of life and culture. So that in honoring this mother principle, um, our, our people understood what they're doing and still understand what they're doing. Uh, this next is a picture of um, a Gelede um, festival in um, Nigeria among the um, Yoruba people. Yeah, this next briefly again. Don't have time to do a lot on this, but I want you to get a feeling of how in all African societies you have seen this divine feminine principle expressed in a form that people could relate to as divinity, as Orisha, as Netaru, as Abusum, and so forth whichever term we use, whatever language we use. And so some, you'll be familiar with some of these terms. Um, Neat, who, who um, Brother Rashidi has talked about. In his articles, you need to look at uh, black women in antiquity, uh, where he talks about what mothers of civilization, I think, um, she is depicted or talked about as the, the vulture that pierces her thigh in order to feed her young. What's the image there? What's the image in terms of the sacrifice of, of African women. You know, my mother used to say that. She said, um, an, an African woman will do anything she has to do to feed her child. And she didn't know none of this, okay? I mean, she knew it, you know, in another sense. But she hadn't read all of this stuff. She hadn't done the research. Um, uh, Oset, Ma'at, Asasaya, the, the earth. Asasaya, the creator, actually. Asasaya, who works along with uh, Nyame, and people need to look at that, Asasaya among the Akan people. Very important, Asasaya. Her ne that, that name is said, and we say her, but we don't really mean her, you know, in the sense of we are her. We're talking about um, a, a, an energy. We're talking about a force. Thank you very much, Mama Safira. We're talking. Um, um, uh, uh, about a, a way of tapping into a force that we need if we are to be healthy. Let us not lose that. Let us not lose it because of the religious uh, conceptions that we have um, taken on for survival and then allowed our minds to be and our spirits to be incarcerated in. Let us not deny this divine female principle. Okay? Um, oh yeah, Oshun, Oshun, Oshun. Um, that that, that uh, divinity of, of femaleness, Oshun. The essence of, of femininity. Um, Yemoja, the mother. The mother. Yemoja, the ocean. These are forces spirits and energies along with Ogun, Shango, that have allowed us to be warriors on this continent and in South America and in the Caribbean. They have, we have performed ritual dances to them with, with weapons in our hands because Oya becomes the warrior when she needed to be the warrior. And that's what the African mother does. And the next one is just to show you how the oppositional unity and the complementarity works itself out in African society. So the terms that you're seeing here 
uh, represent various African societies throughout the, the continent where you have uh, the, the male term and then you have a female, and these are positions in the society which work together in a complementary structure. These, these are uh, models, these are paradigms for political organization, for social organization. These are the ones that we should be using in our organizations. Okay, and I think, okay, now briefly, everything is briefly. Uh, and I am going, if you know me, this is going real fast. Um, the life cycle, I just want you to kind of think about that, feel it, feel it in your soul, that life as process. Life as process where we move through stages of development, which is bringing us closer and closer to manifesting as ancestral spirit, which is what um, is the basis of our society. This is the life cycle, where every stage is connected to every other stage. This is the responsibility of that mother principle to make sure that this thing is happening. And it is through the womb of the woman that is guaranteeing that the life cycle continues. Because it is in our wombs that we carry the ancestors. As well as the, 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 the ancestors who are the seeds of the future, of the continuity. So this life cycle tells us about the importance of the ancestors. The ancestors who represent our immortality, our continuity, the ancestors who represent our collective consciousness, our ancestral consciousness. And then I have um, attempted to, well, I'm using some terms, go ahead. Again, if we use this female principle, you see that spiral, you see that it gives you the feeling of the cycle in the womb, using terms from Dogon of the various levels in the process of knowledge. And what I'm showing is how you can take those terms, Jiriso, Beniso, Boloso, Sodai, Sotani, and Adunoso, representing uh, ever deepening stages of knowledge and ever expanding um, horizons and conceptions so that when Aikwe talks about finding the larger self, that's what we're in the process always of doing. How do you, how do you connect this, this smallest self to the largest self and understand it in those terms and understand it as cosmos? You see, because that's what we are. We are the cosmos. We are the universe. So I'm taking these terms and using them to then, I got 15 more? Is that what I got? OK. Um, using them to then talk about ancestor communion as a process of personal development. And this I would like to spend a lecture on. So I got to do that at another time. But I'm using the Dogon terms to talk about stages in our, the, the development of our consciousness and the use of our spiritness so that we would begin with um, recognizing who our ancestors are and then calling forth their names and so forth and then we would, we would set up shrines and, and we move to um, taking on the responsibility for healing our ancestral line. You see, because that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do and every morning I give thanks, not just to the ancestors whose names I know, but to the names that I don't know because I think about the, the our ancestors who were creating a cultural womb. That's what the village is. That's what the civilization is. That's what the society is. It is a womb with it that nurtures us as African people. They lived in those villages and then they were snatched from them. Snatched from them and stripped of everything they had. Not slowly, but suddenly. It's like if you woke up tomorrow morning 
and you couldn't find anybody, you were in a place that you didn't recognize, and you didn't have nothing. Now, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what do you do with that, and how do you continue living, okay? So I think about them, and then I think about them being put in chains and marched down to the coast, and then put into the dungeons, the dank, dark dungeons, in terror, and then being squeezed out through this hole of no return, and then taken down to these ships and put into these, to the holes of the ships where there wasn't room for a person to be. You had to be cramped like this, and you had to be cramped like that for months, not a night, not a week, but for months. How do you do that? And it has been described by the Europeans who described this scene as talking about the stench of a slaughterhouse. I don't know how many of you uh, have experienced Chicago, but I, I don't think they have it anymore. But I remember when they used to have the stockyards, the smell of those stockyards. You imagine us having to survive in that, in blood and feces and mucus, but we did, okay? Some of us took the courageous position of survival. That took courage. Others took the courageous position of saying, uh-uh, I'm out of here. I'm not gonna deal with that. But the ones who survived, then they're brought to these shores and then they're put on auction blocks without clothes on and sold and then put into a situation of terror for hundreds of years and made to work for a demon, okay? Now, through all of that that I've just described, what our ancestors did was to have children. Think about that. They had children. Who had children? Who had children? Who had children? Who had your parents? Who had you? Okay? And that's why you're here. And what does that mean? What does that mean about your life? What does it mean about mine? We made our choice already. We made our choice in the spirit world. We chose to be African so that we could live in such a way that we would avenge our ancestors. That's what we chose. Okay, so I'm gonna skip some stuff and come, and what I have just described is my offer. And then you look at that, remember the original one. Remember the natural cycle. Well, we're not in the natural cycle anymore. We got ma'afa here, which is disease, okay, which separates all of that, disrupts it, disrupts the rhythm. In ma'afa, our children are being taken away from us while we become caretakers for the enemy's children. Okay? And I want to mention Sister Modupwe Saiz, who I remember being coming to First World and talking yes. about that divine African mother principle and how Europeans always recognize that and take our women to be their mothers. And the pain of that, the humiliation of that, the Ma'afa has made us afraid to know ourselves afraid to go into the matrix, into the womb, afraid to be intimate with ourselves, afraid to be intimate with Africa. If we want to be able to defeat the enemy, 
and to heal our fragmented nation. We will have to touch deeply inside, reaching to the core, and become spiritually intimate with each other again. We have to, to have the courage to know each other deeply and to touch each other deeply. Now, okay, I wanna, I'm gonna give you some quick stuff, and I'm not even gonna talk much. But I'm gonna say that God presented to us in these terms, allowed things to be done to our brothers and our men and our fathers. And these are the things that could be done to us in his name. These are the things that are done. This is a sister to our mothers. And so our children watched as these things were done to their mothers and to their fathers. And while our mothers took care and nurtured their children, because we had to. You can uh, skip that one. And so in terms of the paradigm, ma'at is our wholeness. Ma'afa is the shattering of our people. Sankofa has got to be the process of bringing us back together again. And with the help of Mario Beatty, we are reaching back to see the, the uh, concepts and ideas and symbols that are there that our ancestors created. And here, this one represents the, to nurse. This is what Mario has taught me, to nurse, to suckle. And if I had time, I would talk about the significance of what it means to nurse a child. Because in doing that, through that mother's milk, comes the ancestral consciousness, the cultural genes. It is a continuation of the womb. Outside of the body is that breast. And African people have understood that. That's why breastfeeding was always so important. And this one, uh, this uh, glyph means to nurse or to rear. The concept of rearing, of, of, of nurturing a young African being, that is the most politically important act that we can be doing at this time, or ever. And that's the glyph for it. That is the most important thing that we can be doing, and that's the mother principle, and that's what it means to be an African woman. And now I want you to see what it means to be an African woman. In terms of our ancestors, our ancestral legacy, now let me say this. The pain of the Ma'afa is real, okay? And we're living now in Ma'afa. But there's the glory of what it means to be African, and that's where you get your strength from, to make you know we can do this. Because our mothers did it, our fathers did it. We can do this, we can handle this, okay? Now I want you to look at what's on that screen, on that wall. And you need to look at Please, every, look, look at me here. Look up there. Because this is affirming and this is victorious. The sign and the symbol, the Madunetta for the Ka. Everybody see it? Yes. Now, if you know anything about Kemet, you know that that is African divinity. All right? That's as divine as you can get. Yes. Your Ka. Okay? It is the spirit, the essence of being, the Asili. The next symbol there, which is kat, again, Mario taught me this stuff, means vagina. Now look at that and think about it as you look about it and feel it as you're looking at it, all right? 
Why am I talking about something like that here to this, this audience, you know, in public, a word we don't even use, right? What is that saying? That is associating that part of a woman with the most divine part of humanity. I'm not saying they're doing it. I'm not making this up, right? We just looking at the language. That's what Mario is doing for us. You understand? This next one, Baka, means to be pregnant. What is it saying? It is saying to carry the cup, to carry divinity within you. That's what our ancestors felt about being an African woman. And I say to you, sisters especially, with all the pain you're going through, with all the conflicts you're going through, and searching for good relationships, and trying to deal with your children, and so forth, You've got to take strength from the fact of what it is that we come from. Yes. And we come from a line of women who are political organizers, women who functioned in support of the collective and part of a collective. All African women belong to a collective of women now. You hear what I'm saying? And what Mama Safira was saying, we have to come together to heal each other, and in that healing is power, yes. women's collectives. Yes. Women speak for the ancestors, okay? When we have our periods, when we have our menses, that is not dirty, that is the connection with the ancestors. And so there's wisdom that's coming through that. And the society would learn from us, so they put us in a special place so that we could, we could connect with the ancestors. We were just taught that last week here by an Akan priest. As African women, we are mothers, which means queen. We give birth to the symbolic. We teach. We heal. We are involved in the womb process, which is the blood of the ancestors. And so the MTDA comes through us, all right? As African women, we represent the continuity and the st stability of the society. We represent the culture. We represent the marketplace. We are divine. We are the spiritual leaders and thinkers. And so our men can support us in that, help us in that, work with us in that, and we support them because we come together on the level of society and family and we are one. That's what it means to be African. It ain't about fighting each other. But we have got to affirm who we are because the power in being an African woman is tremendous. And what we're going to end with, and I've skipped a whole lot of stuff, but we're going to end with, um, we're not even going to do that, G. What we're going to do, I hope I have it. Do I have it? Oh, it's right here. Is we took a group of sisters through a process. Jeepa was 15 years old. There were six of them. And Mama Safira helped us do that. Mama Jerry was there for the ceremony. Baba Kobe was there for the ceremony. And this was the pledge. Jeep is going to read it. Um, that these young sisters had to give. And with that, we will end. And I want to say that Mbuboni is a term used from the, uh, the Sande Society for those young sisters who are going through training to be women. Y'all have to bear with me because um, the spirit in here is kind of hot. I'm sitting kind of close to it, so kind of bothered. And I used to know this by heart, so I still have to kind of read it. We are in Bogboni, preparing to be who we must be. We are African women. We are Ni, Aset, Het Heru, Asaseya, Yemanya, Oya, and Oshun. We are Ma'at, the truth in all things. We will seek justice for our people. We will balance the scales. We are African women. We are warrior women. We are Ya Asantiwa, Nahanda, Nani, Harriet, and Fannie Lou. We are African women. We are Mawu. 
complementarity, reciprocity, wholeness, intuitive wisdom, creativity, and love. We are life-giving. We are the rhythm of our people. We are African women. We are Mutnater, divine motherhood. We are the moral sanction of our community, our people's connection to their ancestors and to those yet to come. We are nurturing, caring, proud, determined, and serious. We are the teachers of the way. We are the blood of our people. We are African women. With our men, we will build families for the future. And with them, we will produce African children so that our nation may grow and the ancestors may be reborn. Yes. We are the continuity of our people. Yes. We are African women. We are preparing to be the organizers, revolutionaries, visionaries, and nation builders of tomorrow. We are accountable to the ancestors and we will avenge their spirits. We will live for our people and die for them, if necessary. We are the destiny of our people. We are African women. We are the healers of the race, the spirituality of our people. We are in Bogboni, preparing to be who we must be.